YouTube, what's going on? It's Tijon, AKA Top Cyber Dog, and I'm back with another video for the channel. Now, with this video, we're gonna continue on the theme of jumping into Let's Defend, getting into the sock, and knocking out some alerts. I already picked out an alert that I think would be great for the channel to get into an investigation revolving a phishing alert. So without further ado, let's jump right into Let's Defend and knock it out the park. All right, let's go. All right, so we are loaded into our Let's Defend account and we are already in our main channel where we can select an open alert that hasn't been owned yet. And I was thinking maybe I see a critical alert, but maybe we can try something that happens often and that's a phishing mail um, type of an attack. So let's go with something like that. And as you can see, I already have multiple tabs open that will aid in the investigation just so we're ready to go for the sake of time for this, this video. But as we can see, SOC 101, phishing mail detected. On January the 2nd, 2021 at 3.39 p.m., we were alerted on an SMTP address of 104.140.188.46 with a source address of david at cashbank.com and it was sent to the destination address of mark at lessdefend.io, which is our organization that we're trying to protect. We can see that the email subject was credit card statement, which is kind of suspicious. But then we can also take note that the device action was blocked, meaning that this whole event was essentially blocked on um, the user's end. So they never received this email. Um, detection picked it up and quarantined and blocked it off all right so let's investigate further to see exactly the details of what went on so let's go ahead and take ownership and then after we take ownership that ticket is moved to the investigation channel and then from there we can then begin to create a case for that ticket All right, then once we create that ticket and the case for it, we're then sent over to the case management section where then we can inspect the playbook for this alert and gather the details needed for the investigation. All right, so we can already see parse email. Before starting the analysis, information about the incoming email should be obtained. Okay, so we'll go ahead and jump over to the email security tab. And then what we can do, since the source address is unique, or it looks, it looks unique, let's go ahead and run a search for that and see what comes back, if anything. Okay, so it looks like this source address has communicated to other users in our environment, Catherine. And even though this doesn't pertain to our alert, it is interesting to see that this threat actor, it appears to be sent out financial based emails to our users, potentially trying to get financial gain. Okay, so we see our email right here, David to Mark. And we can see credit card statement, which aligns with our alert and the date. And we can see that the body of the email reads, your credit card statement is attached. And then we have an actual live attachment right here. Now, if to all my defenders at, at home watching this, you do not want to download and open and run or uh, utilize, use any kind of file in these zip folders. They could be, and most likely are, truly malicious and you don't want that exposed on your host machine. So definitely make sure that you're running some kind of um, VM or some kind of virtual lab where you're not gonna be affected if uh, something gets ran on your device and it's all bad from there. So definitely if you decide to interact with these attachments, it's done in a safe sandbox environment. And if you notice right over here to the left, Let's Defend does have a sandbox environment um, that if you're a paid member, you can definitely utilize. I've done it before. 
Uh, you can either spin up a Windows environment or a Linux environment um, and do what you need to do as far as triage. Now let's go ahead and what we can do, since I'm running this on my host machine, what we can do is right click on that link and copy it. And then, like I said, in all my previous investigations, I definitely like to copy the alert details in a Word document just for tracking purposes. And I can easily reference different things um, pertaining to the alert when I'm in outside sources, such as like virus total. So we'll go ahead and paste that link over into a separate Word document. But we'll also want to search that link as well in one of our um, sandboxing uh, platforms. So we'll definitely do that shortly. All right, so let's head back over to our playbook. And we've already collected all of this in that Word document. So we'll hit next. Are there any attachments or URLs in the email? Click yes if there are any attachments. We've already seen that there are definitely a zip file attached to that email. email. All right, now we need to analyze the attachment slash URL. So let's definitely utilize these resources right here. I already have virus total hybrid analysis. Um, I don't have any run loaded up, but definitely useful to use any run. Um, but all right, let's go ahead and check out virus total first. So we'll go ahead and paste that in, see what we get. And right off the bat, virus total does not like this URL. Nine antivirus security vendors have flagged this as malicious and it was analyzed a month ago. All right, let's not stop there. Let's go ahead and plug that in with hybrid analysis as well. And then from here, you can see the link right here, accept their terms and go ahead, go next. And then here we can select the configuration for our sandbox environment. I always go off of Windows 10 um, based on the alert and the potential malicious file. You might need to use Linux, um, but for this, let's just use Windows 10. All right. And it looks like this reputation online is complete dirt. So hybrid analysis has flagged this as malicious and has been labeled as malware. I always like to update the results just to see if anything changed as far as the antivirus results. Okay, and as you can see, it's been flagged as clean now. Um, I wouldn't take this to heart. It can still very much be malicious. So let's go ahead and scroll down to the relations section to see the details of that zip file, zip folder. All right, so it looks like there is a file in there called file and it has been flagged as malicious. So we can click on this and see the details of this entry. All right, so it's been flagged as malicious and labeled as a Trojan, a generic Trojan. Okay. And then hybrid analysis gives its own breakdown of what exactly it does. Okay. So based off of those two platforms, I definitely think we can flag this as malicious. All right, now next play, check if mail delivered to the user. Answer the following question by determining whether the email is delivered by looking at the device action, part of the alert details. Now, if you already copied the alert details, you can clearly see under the device action for the, the alert that we're working on, it has been blocked, meaning it was not delivered. Our systems picked it up and it was quarantined, meaning it was not delivered to our user. All right, so it looks like there's no more plays for us to run. All we need to do is include the details of the IOCs that we found for the investigation and get to reporting. All right, so what we can do is for the first artifact, we can, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and paste that in now. Zip file, URL address. 
I'm gonna hit the plus sign to add another entry. And then I'm going to include the email of the sender, david at cashbank.com. Then we're gonna add the domain, which is cashbank. Cashbank.com. Domain. Email sender. And then we can copy the SMTP address as well. Just so it's noted. Alright, and just I'm just curious about this email domain, Cash Bank. I'm gonna copy it and run a query search. Let's see, an abuse IPDB. I'm just curious about the details behind it. Okay. So they the website abuse IPDB resolve the domain cashbank.com to IP address 52.20.84.62. And it looks like it is a Amazon cloud um, web service. So this doesn't mean necessarily that a threat actor isn't using a legitimate service such as AWS to do malicious attacks. So this is just interesting. We could definitely note this IP address um, for the investigation. So I think I'm going to add that to the artifacts. Okay. Cash bank. Cool. Email IP address. Perfect. Okay. Now we can hit next. Now we need to do the notes. Already in that Word document, have begun writing the analyst notes for the end of this investigation. So we're just gonna finish up on it. Check the contents and determine the file in folder it was indeed malicious. Go ahead and copy that, paste it over into our analyst notes. And then we are going to move on to the next phase, which is essentially closing the alert. All right, we'll finish the playbook. All right, once we do that, we can then see our alert. And now we can begin closing the alert. So we'll hit close alert. And then we can definitely select the true positive that we caught or our system caught. And we'll copy over that analyst notes into the notes for the closed alert. And then once we hit closed alert, we'll find out whether we got it right on the money or we have some things we can learn. All 
All right, the streak continues. I didn't see the confetti drop, so I'm a little worried. I did do an alert earlier in the day that I got, so it could be because I did an alert earlier. So let's see if we got it right or wrong. So go ahead and hit continue. Oh, we got the check mark, meaning we are right on the money. So the confetti didn't drop, but that's because I've been in the field and I've been handling other alerts when I had some downtime. So we got a another alert down. Um, thank you guys for sticking with me through this alert. I know it hasn't been a short one, but uh, I appreciate everybody for their continued support. Definitely leave a comment if you have any questions about this alert or any other alerts you might be working on. I definitely would like to help if I can. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.